Hi, second graders. I had another one of those mystery journal entries for us. Who do you think the author of this is? Yep, it's a paleontologist again. So remember in the first and second ones, what did the paleontologist do at the site? Yeah, they looked for places to dig, they dug for a fossil, or they found and they discovered a fossil. So today we're going to get into this one and see if kind of something similar happens. Mystery journal entry number three. It has been a while since I last wrote. So much has happened. The bone we found was so large we couldn't lift it. We had to wrap it in plaster to protect it. Someone brought a forklift and we moved it to a truck. You guys know what a forklift is, don't you? Like one of those big pieces of machinery that can like lift up really heavy things. Yeah. Okay. So what happened in that paragraph? They tried to lift the bone, but it was too heavy. So they wrapped it in plaster and a forklift moved it to the truck. Right. Okay. I'm just checking to make sure that you're thinking the whole time that you're reading um, about what it is that you're reading. You always want to make sure you can do that. You can say what you just read. If you can't talk about it, you need to go back and reread it. Okay. So let's go to the next paragraph here. Back at the laboratory, we used pliers and saws to remove the plaster. Then we could study it. So they had to put that plaster on there so that they could protect that fossil so they could get it to the laboratory to be studied, right? This was the most exciting day because we discovered that this bone was from one of the largest dinosaurs to ever walk the earth. I am so glad that we took the initiative to come to this site. What's initiative? I know we talk about that in Leader and Me. It means that they decided that they wanted to go and do this and they got themselves ready and, and did it. They showed initiative there. That's a great habit of character. And then we showed perseverance while we hunted for the fossils and made this discovery. Perseverance. You've heard that one. That's where you keep trying. You don't give up. You just keep trying and you finally get it, right? I can't wait to share this compelling story with other people so they know about this new dinosaur and what it teaches us about earth long ago okay so what does compelling mean what does it mean that this story we're going to find out about today is compelling compelling is like exerting a strong hold on your attention so when something is compelling, it gets your attention and it keeps it. So I really hope this story is compelling for you as it has been for me to read. So in the story we're about to look at, we're going to hear about a real life paleontologist, Dr. Holly Woodward Ballard. These have actually been her journal entries. And so you're going to get to hear her story of how they found this huge dinosaur bone. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you our learning target for today. And I had to jump into my Valentine Google Classroom. So this is me reading my compelling story. And I am able, after I read my story, I can describe the character's actions, thoughts, and feelings in the text, The Myasaura Dig, The Story of Dr. Hollywood Woodward Ballard. Now, when you read and study a story, that's what makes stories so entertaining is that you really get to, you get to know the characters and they have actions, things that they do. They have thoughts. And then they, they show feelings in the story, and it makes us really relate to those characters. So we're going to first hear a major event read aloud, and then we're going to discuss what happened in that part of the text. And we're going to talk about why it's compelling. So we're going to jump over here. Let's see. Hmm. How do I jump to that screen? I think I jump over here to this tab. Yes, there we go. We're going to jump over here to this story and we're going to read the first couple of pages and we're going to kind of talk about it. So this is our story. The early years. 
When I was a kid growing up in North Carolina, I always knew that I wanted to be a paleontologist. My earliest memories include looking through dinosaur books, drawing dinosaurs, and playing with dinosaur toys. I went to college to pursue my dream. I studied geology, which is the study of rocks, and biology, which is the study of living things. Sorry, I didn't read that very fluently. She studied geology, which is the study of rocks, and biology, which is the study of living things. That sounds better, makes more sense. This helped me understand how extinct animals lived. So that's kind of her background. And this is a picture of her. And we always look closely at the pictures, what's happening in there. She's using some tools that paleontologists use. She's got those brushes to brush the, the dirt and debris off the fossils. She must be at a site somewhere. And now let's read the caption. Dr. Holly Woodward Ballard using an awl, a brush, and a whisk broom to excavate myosaurus bones. We were right. That's exactly what we thought we were seeing in the picture. Dr. Horner and the Myasaura. One of my professors in college was a world famous paleontologist named Jack Horner. He is best known for his discovery of the Myasaura. Myasaura means good mother lizard. Let's look at that picture there. Dr. Jack Horner in 2018, close to Egg Mountain, surrounded by the Rocky Mountains. Okay. In Montana in the 1700s, Dr. Horner made an unusual discovery. He found the fossil remains of eggshells and adult and baby Myasaura. This was the first evidence that at least some dinosaurs cared for their young. Dr. Horner's discovery helped people start thinking of dinosaurs as active bird-like animals instead of sluggish reptiles. Dr. Horner and his team also found eggs and embryos from other dinosaur species in the same field. This area came to be known as Egg Mountain. And then here's another picture and then the caption bumped all the way down here. The Myasaura Field area in Montana, also known as Egg Mountain. And the photo comes from Dr. Woodward Ballard. That is beautiful. Wow. Okay, so what is making this text so far so compelling? How does it have such a strong hold uh, on our attention? Well, the pictures, the pictures are beautiful and they're keeping me entertained but I'm also really excited. I wanna hear about this huge discovery they made. And now we know all of the background. We know where they were. They're, they're in near Montana in the Egg Mountain area. And what I wanna talk about today is what your assignment's gonna look like. Because I'm gonna read the next few pages for you, but then I'm gonna post this entire article in Google Classroom, and here's why. Okay, we're going to pay a close attention today to our characters, and we're going to pay attention specifically to Dr. Holly Woodward Ballard because she's our main character, and she's going to have lots of actions, lots of things she does in this story. She's going to dig. She's going to hammer and chip. You know, when you chip away at something, she's going to excavate. Remember, that's when you get something out of the ground. But she's also going to do things that like maybe aren't as big of, of an action. Like she's going to think. She's going to see. She's going to find. Maybe pick. Chisel. Now we're back to more using tools to have an action again. She might present or discover or just study or observe. So those are like quieter actions. But they're still actions. She's still doing something. She's going to have thoughts today, and she's going to share those thoughts with you in her story. She's going to say, hmm, I wonder. I know. I didn't know. Oh, I hope. And I'm surprised that. So she's going to share her thoughts with you, probably through things she says out loud, dialogue and quotation marks. 
And then she's going to share her feelings with you today, too. She's going to say things like, I was surprised. I was disappointed or frustrated. I was happy. I was excited. Or, I'm tired. Or, I was exhausted. She might say those things to share her feelings with you. She might show you that she's feeling this way. Like if someone was feeling tired, they might say, I yawned and didn't know if I was going to be able to make it all that much farther. And that would show you that she's feeling tired. So we're going to be on the lookout for actions, thoughts, and feelings as we read today. And then when we get done reading, this is what your assignment will look like. You are going to fill in this graphic organizer. So we're going to be looking at, we've broken it up into beginning, middle, and end of the story. We want to know in the beginning of the story where she was and what tools she had. Easy. We can find those in the story, right? And just put them here and here. Now, when we look at her actions, though, we want to make sure we pay atten close attention to what actions she took to discover the fossil. And then what did the fossil look like? Those details. Then we want to pay attention to her feelings when she finds the fossil. How did she feel? What did she think? And finally, we, in the end of the story, where they're closing up the story, I want to hear some more actions again. What did she do after she found the fossil? So you're going to write in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places today. And a sentence is fine, just a sentence or two maybe, but you know, you know what to do. This here won't need a whole sentence. You can just say where she was. Okay, let's get back to that story. All right, the search for the tiniest bones. Every bone discovery is exciting for me. But you might be surprised to hear that the smallest myosauro bones, not the largest, are the most thrilling to find. This is still because we know very little about how dinosaurs grew up from tiny hatchlings into adults. So the tiniest bones can give us the most important clues. On my latest dig at the Branvold Quarry in the Egg Mountain area, I was on the hunt for baby bones. Wait a minute. I think she just told us where she is. I can go right now back over to that graphic organizer and put it in. I think that's what I'm going to do. Where was she? She was in the, oop, I mistyped it, Branvold Quarry. I think I'm going to put in parentheses where that is. That's in the Egg Mountain area. Okay, it's back to our story. But there were so many bones in the quarry. Is that where I stopped? Yes. But there were so many bones in the quarry. How would I find a tiny bone in the piles of large and broken bones? I wasn't sure that my search would be successful. The area where my crew and I were digging is surrounded by hilly grassland. The grass is normally a deep green, but it was beginning to turn golden yellow from the summer sun and heat. We could see the jagged rocky mountains to the west. The Branvold Quarry is about 64 square meters. A crew that had been there before us had already moved about, removed about 15 feet of rock. This exposed the fossil layer. Oh, we learned about the fossil layers when we made our um, fossilization books. At first, we needed to remove the sediment on top so we could get to more of the bones. We used shovels and pickaxes to scrape off the sediment and then we loaded the dirt and rock into a wheelbarrow and removed it from the site. Sometimes the rock was so hard we even had to use a jackhammer. Okay guys, check it out here. There's your tools. So I hope you pause and I hope you go type in your tools. Okay, are you back? Before long, we were only about two feet above the bone layer. We started using smaller hand tools like awls, whisk brooms, and brushes. There's some more tools. You can pause and put them in. Gently, we removed the rest of the sediment and uncovered the bones. A whisk broom, awl, chisel, and a brush resting on a myosaur bone. There were so many bones. We found them almost anywhere we dug. There's an action. 
There's lots more that I didn't mention though. We could spot them in the gray mudstone because of their dark black color. We could also identify them by the sound they would make when scraped by the awl. The bones sounded like porcelain or glass when scraped, but the mudstone sounds more dull. The shape and texture were our last clues. Bones are usually symmetrical in shape, and if a bone is broken, the inside looks sort of spongy. Every time we found a bone, we would record it. We used meter squares in the field and grid paper. Those are some more of the paleontologist tools, aren't they? That's also something that they did too. There's an action. Data collection is so important in paleontology. It can help us understand the environment where the bones were buried and the age of the rocks. Sometimes we can even figure out the cause of death. Ooh, there's the Branvold quarry with meter square grid markings marked with flags. It was nearing the end of our time at Branvold quarry. We had found so many bones, but I was beginning to think we wouldn't find any tiny ones. How's she feeling? Put it on your chart. But then on one of the last days, a tiny black line caught my eye. I carefully removed pieces of mudstone from around the bone. Then I gently brushed another action, the bone surface, applying a special glue to the bone as I went. Once the entire surface was uncovered, I could see that it was a tiny Myasaura femur. The bone was only about 15 centimeters long. We know about centimeters from math. We know how long that is. 15 centimeters is about the same as about five and a half inches. And it's about the same as a pencil. So that's how long the bone was. At last, I had found my tiny bone. The Myasaura femur was 15 centimeters long, or about 5.5 inches, which is a little shorter than a sharpened pencil. I recorded my find in the meter squares in the field and on grid paper. I couldn't wait to tell my team. How's she feeling? Put it on your chart. After the dig, I plan to take it back to my lab. I wanted to analyze the bones so I could learn more about the dinosaur's age and how fast it grew. At the end of the dig, my team and I were so excited about all of the Myasaura bones we had found. We were the first human beings to uncover the remains of these awesome creatures from 76 million years ago. And I was especially thrilled to have finally found the tiny femur. What an incredible feeling. And here's the picture. Dr. Holly Woodward Ballard pointing at a tiny fossilized bone in the Myasaura bone bed. There, there's that picture. Okay, guys. So you know what your job to do is today. Fill in that graphic organizer. You can type on the slide. You can print it and write on it. You can do it on a piece of paper. Doesn't matter. Just get it done. Turn it in. Your article is also linked here so you can go back and look. And I will see you back tomorrow. See you later.